Oh boy, looks a lot different from up here. Can I, can I get everybody, I'm going to check the microphone here and get used to this. Can I get everybody to stand up, please? Stand up for me. All right, just look around the room a little bit. All right, go ahead and be seated. And I want you to really think about why I had you stand. I said, see, when I go to church on Sunday, I'm up and down, up and down. Our pastor's like, please stand, please sit down, please stand. And I just wanted to look, see what it looked like from up here. <laughs> So now I know I don't want to be a preacher. So I uh, I want to thank everybody for coming to uh, Las Vegas to to uh, partake in this uh, historic occasion. And uh, I want to correct one thing that Max said. I'm not fighting with the federal government. In my opinion, I'm defending the people that I serve. Oh boy, where I, why I got to where I'm at today. I've, uh, I've been a police officer for about 27, 28 years. And over the last 15 to 20 years, I've seen a, an increase in actions on behalf of the federal government, mainly the Forest Service, and some from the Bureau of Land Management where our access to our public lands has been severely restricted. And it just, it, it just this little thing in the back of my mind that just keeps ticking and uh, you see more and more restrictions from our public lands. The county that I'm from in Grant County is, is about mid-central eastern Oregon. We're about 135 miles from the Idaho border and about the same from Walla Walla, Washington. Uh, my county is 5,000 square miles. We have about 7,000 residents, except during hunting season, there's well over 10 or 15,000. Our economy is public land driven. We rely on the timber and the cattle industry. We used to. Our county lowest point is about 1,200 feet above sea level and it goes to about eight or 9,000 feet in the Strawberry Mountain Wilderness. And our county is comprised of about 65% federal lands uh, on the Forest Service side and about another 15 to 18% and I'm kind of guessing here on the BLM lands. And just to kind of go to to give you an idea of what we have and what we're, what we're saddled with is when you have your cattle, your timber, your mining, your recreation, all of that ties back to what you're going to do with your government, how your schools run, how your city and county governments run, and it drives your economy. Grant County, Oregon shares the highest unemployment oftentimes with Harney County, which is my neighbor to the south of me. The highest unemployed county in the state right now is Crook County, which is just to the east of me, and I have a little bit of Crook County touches down in the southeast corner of my county. We, we have had uh, some real hard, tough economic times, and, and you can just tie it back to, the, to what's going on on our public lands. What really got me to thinking back in, in 2009 was uh, I had about eight or nine people come to me and complain. And I, I, I didn't go seek out these people, they came to me. And at times they had uh, four service police officers pointing guns at them. It seemed like every car stop was at gunpoint. And they were over basic wood, wood permits or what they call road closure violations. I'm going to go back just a little bit and over the last 15 to 20 years the Forest Service started closing roads and it slowly and slowly and slowly until they're almost all shut off. I had a retired district ranger come to me and a district ranger in the Forest Service is like the second in command at the local level. I didn't go look him up, he came to me after I kind of stirred the pot here and he, he told me, he says, these road closures that the Forest Service is conducting are illegal. They don't have a basis and a purpose. And us as law enforcement officers, try and close a county road, try and close a state highway, and try and close a federal highway. You can't do it. We don't have the authority to just blatantly shut off the public from their land. From what we've heard earlier today, you can, you can pretty much come to a consensus that we've, this country's come to a huge mistrust from our federal government. 
Like I've said, the economics and hardships placed upon our citizens have become overbearing. Through my office as sheriff, we've, we've seen a lot more foreclosures and repossessions of private property. We've had evictions, small claims go through the roof where we serve papers on the citizens in our county. These people are having a, a difficult time in providing basic needs for their families. And we've also had an elevated rate in, in suicides. And you can tie it all back to the economy. Early on in my career as a police officer, I was taught that there were three branches of government, which are the legislative, the executive, and the judicial branch. In the last 50 years or so, there's been a disturbing growth of a fourth arm in our government, and that's the bureaucratic branch. This branch of our government has become huge and unaccountable to anyone. It is unelected, and honestly, it is and should be alarming to each and every one of us. One needs to be reminded that our country was founded and based upon a Republican form of government. A basic summary to this, and Mr. Badnerick probably touched on quite a bit of this, so I'm gonna go through it rather quickly, but the Constitution is a contract between the several states and had been intended to limit, prohibit, and restrict our central or federal government. This document had never been intended to empower the federal government, and the framers of that document knew this from experience. A Republican form of government was designed and intended to be of the people, by the people, and for the people. This form of government establishes a hierarchy intended to be governed at the most local level and closest to the people. And what I say by this, folks, is when you have school boards, city councils, fire districts, all of those that are elected by our people within our areas, that is where the power remains, and it's with the people who empower those people to govern our lives, not from the top down. This would give the people that elect their, their leaders, the people that, that, that they would, that I, as a sheriff, I would protect their best interest and have them first and serve them first. I often see an overbearing federal government enacting rules and regulations that serve no one but a democratic form of government. Laws, rules, and regulations drafted, passed, and enforced by agencies that have no constitutional authority to do so. There are a lot of things going on within my county that are decided right at the local level. There are policies, there's rules, and there's regulations that don't go through any kind of a legislative process other than somebody signing a piece of paper that we're gonna enforce this and act this today. And it's costing our people their jobs, their livelihoods, and it's killing our communities. We need to get back to the basics and start, a, and a good start would be to educate the people that the creation of our constitution and nation was to form a government that the people to be governed could be controlled. To that end, their first concern was to limit the authority of the government and the rule it was to have over our lives. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 gave very explicit power to the federal government. Congress and courts have unquestionably used portions of our Constitution to interpret and expand the authority of the federal government, far beyond what I believe the framers had in mind. The framers feared a government that ruled the people and that the people had cause to fear. You tell me if the fears, if their fears have a foundation in today's society. Look at our gun sales in this country. I am about as pro Second Amendment as anybody can be. When you have people going out and buying and hoarding ammunition and gunpowder and firearms, that shows me there's a huge distrust between our government and the people that our government should be serving. I'd like to share just a little bit on, on our oath of office. And I had you, had you stand a little bit earlier. And I'd just like to ask you to take a stand and examine what, when you took your oath of office, where were you at mentally and what, and what, it's, what it means to you right here inside. I've, uh, 
I've pretty much started doing what I'm doing um, on my own. I've never had anybody come to me and prod me. I just got to the point where I was tired of seeing our, our economy and our communities turn into to ghost towns and the public lands being shut off for no reason at all. And I think as sheriffs or police officers, we have a duty and an obligation to serve the people that put us in office first. I, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to close and, and step down and give somebody else an opportunity to get up here and, and share what they stand for and what they believe in. But um, I just want to thank Richard Mack for, for spearheading this. And, and there's a lot of other people behind Mr. Uh, Mack and what he's done and what he's stepped up to do to get us all here in Las Vegas. And I, I just want you to guys and gals to let you know I appreciate everybody coming here. So thank you.